You've seen our next guest on HBO's True Detective and The Wire. And he's also starring on Broadway in the Tony Award winning musical, The Book of Mormon. That's How it. That? That's How it. That That's look? perfect. Perfect. You're high Thank you. About his career <laughs> on television, yeah, on film, and like Lola said, on stage as actor Michael Potts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. No, of course you did. I didn't mean of to butcher it. Of course you did. No, you didn't butcher it at all. <laughs> there you go. No more, no more than I do, so that's oh, good. <laughs> well, let's talk about True Detective okay. before we talk okay. about the book up. I won't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your character, your character director, Gil Bao. Gil Bao, yes. Detective Gil Bao. And what uh, drew you to this project? Um, well, I'll tell you, Detective Gilbao, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Maynard is his first name. Maynard Gilbao is a Louisiana State detective. Mm -hmm. He's the lead detective on this new case, along with his partner, Thomas Papania, played by Tori Kittles. And we've caught this case that has uh, a, a serialized murder that has the uh, occult tones that's very, very similar to a case, almost identical to a case that... Uh, the detectives Rustin Cole and Martin Hart, played by uh, Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson, respectively, had gotten back in 1995. Mm -hmm. So we've been called in to try to solve this new case. This new case. All right, yeah. well, we have a clip. Yeah. Let's take a look, then discuss a little more. All right, all right. Do you want to talk the whole case through or just the end? No. Whole story from your end, you don't mind. You know, like he said, files got ruined. Hurricane Rita. But what he didn't say is that this is about something else. Something new that wanted Lake Charles, maybe? I don't know why you see that. Get the details out of the paper. Yeah, we did. You know anything about that? About Lake Charles? Yeah, let me see what you got. Yeah, my memory. Well, let's hear your story first. <laughs> see how it fit with what we got. You're down, boss. <laughs> you guys are like playing Whoa. chess. Right. That was so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time chess players. There's a palpable chemistry there. What's the mood like on set? Uh, well, with Matthew, Matthew and Woody are very, very different. Matthew, because he's playing the, the darker and more intense role, mm -hmm. was really very much like that uh, on the set, and pretty mm -hmm. much even during breaks or during cuts. He was pretty much always kind of concentrated and staying in the, in the character. Okay. And... Uh, we were shooting for very, very long hours. I remember particularly that scene in a very small <laughs> interrogation room, mm -hmm. so it was always very, very intense and tended to be really, really quiet in between, in between shots. So, um, but no, that was good. That because, was good. yeah, it was really, really good. Well, overall, it seems a little bit more grim than some of the other cop shows that are out. How is it different from other shows, you know, Law and Order, Blue Blood, right, CSI? Right, right. Well, you know, the, not to be disparaging of that, but you, you know, go law. Ahead. No, 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 I Give won't us the do truth. that. Come on. But you know, law and order because you know we've got huge followings. Right. Law and order, and everybody loves them, including my family. <laughs> is that those are you know, they're, they're procedural dramas. Mm -hmm. They're formulaic. You know how they're going to end. You know mm -hmm. how it's going to work. You're going to see the crime. <laughs> exactly. Know, then we're going to see the a nice investigation. Neat bow. Yeah, and this is is more gray. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's more gray, and it's much much darker, you mm -hmm. know, much more intense, and you don't know. I mean, there's the element of, uh, you know, kind of uh, thriller, uh, yeah. sort of there's a thriller element to it as well as it's very suspenseful. We don't know how it's going to end. You shouldn't. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Uh, who the killer is, when yeah. we'll find them, how we'll find out, and what, and basically, how much does everybody know, mm -hmm. and what does everybody else know mm -hmm. is what we're going for. I like that you can't, you know, guess what's going to happen. It's not some shows are a little too predictable, but right. on this, it's like, because you bounce back and forth through different years as well, right? right? Over a 17-year period is told from different, different time periods, different mm -hmm. angles, and, and even different angles in within the same time period. Mm -hmm. Now, what drew you to this project? Um, <laughs> an audition. An audition? <laughs> well, that always works. <laughs> My manager. My manager. Drew, he drew me. That helps. He drew me <laughs> to this project. He was like, here's this project. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's this project they would, they would like for you to come in and read for it. How about that? <laughs> well, what's it like shooting in Louisiana? Oh, man. That's like his fantastic. own character on the show. It was fantastic. I had really? the best time. As I tell everybody, uh, when I came back, everything you've heard about it is absolutely true. I mean, what parts? It's an amazing, the food. Um, uh, how many po'boys did you 
have? Oh, mm-hmm. way too many. Way too many. Yeah. <laughs> How many way. hurricanes did you have? Not one. You did. You had Not one, one hurricane. Not one hurricane while I was down there. What? Not one. But I kept missing everything. I kept oh. missing Mardi Gras. I kept missing <laughs> the Essence Fest. I missed everything. The Jazz yeah. Fest. It was always. You're a busy man. Just leaving just before, <laughs> coming back just after. All work mm-hmm. for you, huh? Yeah. yeah. All work. So speaking of work, how did you manage to balance shooting this and the Book of Mormon? How does that work? Well, you know, I've got very, very generous producers over at the Book of Mormon mm-hmm. and Garofino and Scott Rudin, and I basically said, "Pretty please, can I go and do this amazing <laughs> HBO series?" And, and they, they said went, yes. Okay. And I said, uh, also, pretty please, can I come back and still have a job when mm-hmm. I'm done? And they went, okay. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, so. That's huge. Did yeah. you have any huge. idea that Book of Mormon would become such a phenomenon? No. No clue. No, no clue. I thought, uh, think, you know, speaking most optimistic, mm-hmm. I thought, okay, a year. Mm-hmm. We, we may get a, a year out of this, but mm-hmm. it wouldn't turn into the juggernaut that it is. I wow. mean, it's kind of uh, It's been a commercial surprising. and critical success. Huge. And you rarely Never find those it. two. Never saw it coming. What makes it work <laughs> with critics and audiences? I think, well, I don't know. Uh, Number one, the creators, Trey and Matt and Bobby, they love musicals. Mm-hmm. They absolutely do, and this is really an old-fashioned musical. I mean, it is your basic old-fashioned musical. The story is relatable to everyone else. It doesn't ostracize their incredible fan base from mm-hmm. South Park and also from Avenue Q with Bobby Lopez. So they managed that impossible thing of pleasing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nearly mm. everyone. It, it rarely happens. I mean, yeah. It's, wow. it's, uh, it's, it's lightning striking. Wow. It really is. Well, how is acting on Broadway different for you from, you know, your film and your TV appearances? And which one do you prefer? Um, <laughs> it's different in the... The acting technique is the same, mm-hmm. basically, whether it's on stage or, in, or, in, or in, front of, uh, in front of the camera. The only difference more so is that the camera, it's smaller. Okay. I mean, as you well know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and so you're limited in how much and how far you can move, your physical... Um, your physicality that you can use on camera, like probably I'm gesticulating way too much for most no, directors we like on camera. No, we like it. Get what you say. But on stage, of course, you have to. I mean, you have a lot more ground to cover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You're moving a lot. So I, I, I think of it in terms of one is more internal because the camera can read your thoughts. It can. Mm-hmm. It's right there. So if you just have the thought, almost a psychic sort of thing with the audience, the camera will pick that up. Whereas on stage, because you've got to get to row Z, <laughs> you have... The nosebleed. Right. Yes, right. you've got to put it out there a little more. So do you like the immediate reaction from the audience or is that just more pressure? No, I like, I like the yeah, more yeah. immediate reaction. Okay. I mean, it was a nice thing going back you know, coming back after having shot mm-hmm. True Detective and those first few nights, you know, you're getting back into shape for it, getting used to it again and, and realizing, like, wow, nothing kind of beats this live audience experience. They're, like, right there. They kind of mm-hmm. let you know what they think immediately. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember your first time on the stage? Oh. Was it a school play? My first, no, it was church. A church? <laughs> okay, you know, take it those, back. those lovely Christmas and Easter pageants oh. at my grandparents' church, which you had no choice but to do. <laughs> <laughs> so when you at that age, did you say, oh, I want to be an actor? Or did Absolutely you have, not. What did you want to like, do? No. So what did you want to do as a kid? I didn't want to do it at all. I mean, really? I, I mean initially, shy? I thought I was. Mm. <laughs> I thought I was, and I only... If I did well, it was out of fear (laughs) of my grandparents and disappointing them Mm -hmm. Uh because they went over everything with you. They knew exactly what speech you had to do, and they wanted you to do it well because you represented your people, you represented the family, so you had to do it well. So what did you want to do when you were a kid? I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a cardiologist like Charles Drew. Okay. Really? Famous black, you know. I wanted to I wanted to do that for a long time. So how do you go from wanting to be a doctor to ending up at the Yale School of Drama? Well, two things. <laughs> I, I, I saw an open heart surgery. I got to see that, oh. and that wasn't uh. <laughs> what I imagined it would be. And I yeah. thought, okay, no, maybe not that. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> not that. Too much blood? Too much, too, too much blood. And, you know, church, if you go, it's, it's a form of theater anyway. You mm-hmm. see it. I mean, you, it's all well choreographed. And so that's always kind of in your subconscious anyway. Mm. And then there's something that clicks. You watch Sidney Poitier when you're growing up, and mm. he was the man in the heat of the night. And then I think it was in seventh grade. 
uh, our English teacher showed us a film, I guess, didn't want to teach that day, and it was like a man for all seasons, <laughs> oh. and Paul Schofield, and I remember that. Okay. I said, well, okay, this is giving me the same sort of goose pimples that, mm. that I would get with my grandmother's minister. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I can do both of these things. And so it's, I, I think that's where the germ mm. uh, sort of was born, okay. around seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. And now, ever since then. Ever since then. Well, there's been yeah. some other amazing actors that have come out of Yale Drama School, like Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, my. Oh. It's award season. Oh. What do you have to say? Oh, <laughs> Lupita, Lupita, Lupita. Okay. That's what I say, male or female. She's uh -huh. given the most amazing performance this year. So wow. you think she deserves to win she, the Oscar? Oh, my. Yes. Okay. Wow. Well, you heard it here, fan. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> huge fan. <laughs> and she's gorgeous. And she's gorgeous. <laughs> and she's gorgeous yes. Well, you know, Vanity Fair says that 2013 was a banner year for black mm. film and black male actors in particular. Yeah. What do you think of that assessment and what are your predictions for 2014? Was last year a fluke or will we see even more work for black actors this year? Well, I hope. I mm -hmm. hope there's I hope there's more. What has been great about 2013 was just the variety of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had Michael B. Jordan and Fruitvale and then you had Chewy Tal and then you had Idris. Mm -hmm. So you had a diversity of work that we hadn't had before. And so I'm hoping that continues. And I also was reading that the audiences for, for black film um, have become more diverse. Hmm. And so that's what I'm hoping will continue. I hope it's the start of <laughs> something that becomes the norm exactly. as opposed to just the exception. Got it. All right. Got so it. Yeah. what's next for you? You're so busy already, but I'm still what's busy. next on your schedule? I'm still busy. I don't know. Okay. No. I don't know. Well, you've got enough something going fantastic, on. Something fantastic. Yes. <laughs> something equally as great as how it's been. Thus oh. far. All right. So yeah. tell us where we can, when and where we know HBO. We can catch True Detective. You can catch True Detective every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All, All right. right. Tune yeah. in. We'll be checking you out. Okay. Please do. And Thanks. you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.